what is up guys it is christ and we are back with another video welcome back to dream theater thursday i have another video coming up today um it's going to be explaining why i haven't been uploading and you guys are just going to get you guys are just going to have to see how ridiculous these construction workers are i'm going to be recording just like the raw audio so you guys can hear how loud it was and i'm thinking about making a, a pretty funny video too about it so we'll see anyways this is going to be as i am this is uh, the Train of Thought album, in case you guys didn't notice. Um, I kind of figured it would be uh, because Train of Thought and Images and Words were neck and neck with each other. And I, have a fe I had a feeling that as soon as Images and Words got done, that it would be Train of Thought next. And it looks like that was the case. It won by a pretty big landslide. Uh, other people had suggested Awake. That's another like really big album that me people want me to react to. But we're going to be checking out Train of Thought first. I got to go with the majority. Majority want to see Train of Thought. I'm going to show them Train of Thought. Um, but I'm not going to be doing um, This Dying Soul initially. You guys will have to let me know if you want me to, to uh, re-listen to that in the context of the album. I'm going to be listening to As I Am, Endless Sacrifice, and Honor Thy Father. I'm going to do this all in one episode so you guys can uh, actually... Yeah, I'm going to do this in one episode. I'll, um, if you guys want me to redo... This Dying Soul just release it as a separate bonus video next week. But uh, Train of Thought is an album released in 2003, looking at Genius. That's where I'm getting this information by, by uh, Dream Theater. Is the seventh studio album, the third with their then new keyboardist, Jordan Rudess. Third. Okay. Uh, and the one with the shortest writing times in their career, a mere three weeks, which is pretty cool. I mean, uh, so musically, it is much heavier and balls to the wall than any of the albums that came before and after. This heavier sound came about when their drummer um, inspired was he was inspired by the audience response, um, the positive response to heavier songs, which uh, made him want to make a whole heavy album. And so I am super excited for this. I love heavy music. You guys know this. Um, and so I'm not going to waste any more of your time. It's already looks like two minutes in. So let's go ahead and get started. We are checking out as I am. Apparently about um, people criticizing Petrucci. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a lyrical analysis afterwards. You guys don't know how excited I am for this listening to the Dream Theater.
potty mouth. I like that. is a free browser add-on available on Google, Mr. Oprah, Beast. Firefox, Safari, if it's a browser, it... So, that is going to be Dream Theater's As I Am. Now, let's start with the musical analysis, since that's fresh on my mind. Um, there was some absolutely amazing riffs in this song, uh, and I love that driving riff. This is very much, I could tell, going to be a riff-oriented um album and i'm super excited for that um petrucci was the one here taking the charge um and this is actually uh r r wrote by petrucci i believe now this song well first we'll talk about the music first so my young was really clear and audible in this and i loved it um portnoy was also really good on the drums he uh fit very well i could definitely tell he's really enjoying like this heavier sound um, Rudess didn't really take a uh, front and center. He kind of did a more supporting role in this song. Um, I almost didn't hear him at first. Uh, I had to really be paying attention for him. 
And so uh, he definitely was really good as a supporting um, as a supporting musician. Now, uh, James Labrie, I thought he uh, I never really heard him use profanity in his own songs before. So that was pretty, uh, pretty funny to listen to. I'm just not used to it, you know. Um, so, yeah, it was a it was a very um, good song, like musically. And um, the way he, the um, the vocal patterns um, were arranged sounded really good. This was a really headbanging uh, headbanger song, which I really liked. So that's going to be a musical analysis. Oh, you got to talk about the guitar solo. The guitar solo was nothing short of absolutely amazing. Petrucci is always delivering the goods when it comes to guitar solos. So um, let's go ahead and talk about a lyrical analysis. So it says the opening track, looking at Genius, that's where I'm getting this, uh, of Tratum Thought is uh, As I Am. It's written by guitarist John Petrucci. Uh, it is a song about his dislike of the various figures in the music industry and how he doesn't appreciate them telling what to do about his music. Uh, said figures could be anyone from music executives to fellow musicians um, and critics in general. So I definitely got 100% got that vibe from the song. I didn't even have to like read an analysis on it. Um, for example, it's right here in the first line. Don't tell me what's in. Tell me how to write, which I'm assuming he means don't tell me how to write. Don't tell me how to win. This fight isn't your life. It isn't your right. Um, in other words, it's none of their business um, to take the only thing that's mine, the only thing he's ever created, which is his music. Proven over time, it's over your head. Don't try to read between the lines. I loved – so this is actually two lines, like, blended into one. He says, don't try to read the – and then the next is lines are clearly defined. Uh, and he says, never lose sight of something you believe in. And this is just so true. Like, I listen to Dream Theater's music, and I, I, I look at his absolute passion for his music and um, the fact that he, he doesn't give a uh, – he doesn't care about what other people think, and uh, it's it's awesome to see. It's awesome to see people not not caving to what's popular or what's new and sticking to their their beliefs, their their own their own I guess uh, music, their own brand. And he says uh, the breakdown says taking in the view from the outside, feeling like the underdog, watching through the window. I'm on the outside, living like the underdog. He's not he's not trying to to um to be popular he is doing his own thing and he doesn't care what other people think and he says i've been trying to justify you in the end i will just defy you that's some really cool um play on words he was doing right here um he, he said uh, and the chorus says to those who understand i extend my hand um to the doubtful i demand take me as i am uh, i'm not going to change for anybody i'm not going to change for the world i'm not going to change for money uh, is essentially what he's saying right here. Not under your command. I know where I stand. I won't change your. I won't change to fit your plan. Take me as I am. Holy crap! This song is just speaking to me. I love this song. Um, still running uphill, swimming against the current. I wish I weren't so effed. Feeling it feels like I'm stuck, lost in a sea of mediocrity. Slow down. You're thinking too much. Where's your soul? Which is uh, a line. Slow down. What you're thinking too much. Where is your soul? And then he, his direct response is, you cannot touch the way I play or tell me what to say. You're in the way of all that I believe in. So this, I'm not going to even bother like talking about the rest of the song because this is an absolutely amazing song. So packed full of like just this, an absolutely amazing statement. I'm not going to bow to you. I'm not going to change. Uh, I am who I am, and I don't care what other people think of me. I'm going to make what I want to make, and I don't care what anybody else thinks. And... That's perfect, perfect uh, meaning for us for this song, and this is definitely going to be one that's going to be going on repeat for a while. Um, I love this song. This is definitely um, one of my my favorites in the making. Now, like I said, we're going to be doing two or three today. Um, you guys are getting it all in the same video. I actually have to go back. Apologize. I may uh, cut this out. I may not. So it looks like endless sacrifice is next. When you get a wireless plan, yeah. wouldn't it be great Sorry to get a this. phone to so I guess this is switch to Sprint like and get a live a limited plan with the stream. Samsung Galaxy S10e included for just $35 a month? 
it's a big deal. Hope it doesn't get me copyrighted. Okay.
kind of thrashing here. I like that. Holy crap, there's so much cool stuff going on right now. We have to do some really cool stuff to kill his Portnoy. I love Rudess with sections like this.
rock ending, yes. Oh, <laughs> I almost clicked off. They got me. Oh, yes. There you guys have it. That was Endless Sacrifice. That was an absolutely amazing song. I'm actually going to get the next one queued up. Um, what was the next one? Honor Thy Father. This is one that I've had requested a crap ton. Hopefully it's good. Guys, I got to say, I know I say this every single time um, that like the next this album, like Captain is my favorite. This one is actually like in my top three. I would say that this one, Images and Words in Metropolis, are my favorites. I love Distance Over Time. It's an awesome album, but I think the other albums that I've listened to are slightly better. Um, I'm just going to get this queued up, and then we'll talk about the previous song. Okay, I want you to imagine for a second everything you buy. Don't want to get copyright. I've gotten a copyright claim on an actual ad on my channel, so therefore I don't really want to do that. We're going to get queued up. We're going to talk about this last song. Holy crap! Endless Sacrifice was absolutely amazing. Now I get the vibe. Um, I tried not to look at the um, at the definition before, and it looks like I was sort of right. Um, I thought that this was um sort of like um, uh, like it had a really strong Dear God vibe, uh, by Avenged Sevenfold, where he is uh talking about missing a loved one while he's on the road, and then um. For example, like a uh, really strong evidence to that is, uh, um, it was the bridge, and it says all that you've forsaken and all that you've done, so that I could live out this undying dream, won't be forgotten or taken for granted. I'll always remember your endless sacrifice. Talking about his, um, potentially his family at home, um, how he's extremely grateful for them that they are are supporting him, even though it is hard. It is extremely hard, um, being on the road and it looks like i was actually correct i tried not to look at the um interpretation and try to de like decipher it myself and i was pretty spot on um so it actual it, it says uh on genius he says a uh, well it says a possibly autobiographical song about a rock musician on the road who misses his love uh, it is often believed uh john petrucci wrote this song about his personal experiences and how he misses his wife while he's touring the world which is essentially what I got out of the song, right? If it wasn't um, a wife, I was thinking family. Um, but I don't know if he really has, like, an actual family, like kids and stuff. Um, but, yeah, this kind of stuff would be hard on anybody, I would imagine. Um, I, I, list, I watched a whole bunch of um, of interviews from, like, Avenged Sevenfold and Metallica. And both of them say that they, they've severely cut down on the amount of tours they do simply because um, family, the older you get, the more important family is. Uh, Metallica, I think, is only doing like 50 shows a week, or at least they said they were only going to do 50 shows. I think they went back up um, more, but um, it's hard being on the road. Um, I I've talked to some people who uh, who do travel a lot, and it's extremely hard. It can it can tear the family apart. It could end up in a divorce. And so um, he's just expressing his severe gratitude for people, uh, mo most likely his loved ones that um, that still support him, even though. It is ridiculously hard, which is the term endless sacrifice. So that's that's my lyrical um, analysis of the song. Uh, and I was pretty spot on. So um, now we're going to talk about the music. Holy crap, there was so many amazing uh, guitar riffs. Um, I thought that this was originally going to be um, a ballad because of the way it started. Uh, there was some clean uh, guitar uh, going on. But then it slowly started building up over time. Um, during the pre-course, it started like he started hearing a little bit more grit on his guitar tone, and then he went um, he went all out in the chorus. Um, so it kind of like it had sort of like a roller coaster thing. It went up and down in terms of like the momentum of the song. But once it got going in these solos, it was just an unstoppable force. That was one of the coolest sections I have ever seen in a Dream Theater song. The dueling solos between Petrucci and Rudess. That was absolutely amazing, and I loved every second of it. Um, just goes to show the, the musical capabilities of these people, just like what he was talking about, uh, in the song, as I am, like, 
you gotta stick you gotta stick to your own convictions and write your own stuff and um it's just absolutely amazing to see these two amazingly talented artists uh in a band now a lot of people I, i've actually heard some different things P people say that um i forget the first uh kevin moore a lot of people say that him and i think derek were uh more based on feel and rudess is more like um a technical monster but then um people say the same thing about uh, portnoy and um and mangini but people prefer the the people that uh, the people prefer Portnoy, obviously, because he's been in the band. He was in the band for like I think uh, almost 20 years. He was in the band, um, and uh, there's obviously like an attachment there, right? Um, and it's going to take people to um, a long time to get to accept him to the point uh, of where Portnoy was. But a lot of people prefer um, uh, Portnoy over Mangini. But Portnoy is more on the feel side. Meanwhile, Mangini is more on the technical side. Um, and it's kind of interesting because if you look at the previous uh, keyboardists, uh, I believe Derek and uh, and Kevin were both more on the feel side. And um, Rudess is more on the technical side. And people, uh, from what I have seen in my comment section, say that um, Rudess is a million times better. So it's kind of weird how that flips. Um, if we just remove like the the um the any emotional uh attachment to a particular person it's kind of weird how people prefer a more feely type drummer which uh, i'll get into um and then other people prefer a more technical keyboardist now don't get me wrong like uh rudess is like he is perfectly capable of of playing with his feeling and passions and emotions i have seen it and it's absolutely amazing to see but he's also like this really fun guy i could tell he has a blast when he plays keyboard um, he is really the wizard, and he can do absolutely everything. And it's really awesome to see that in this song. Um, I just realized this. I've been talking about this song forever. It's it's an awesome song. I could definitely tell this is going to be uh, one of my favorite records. I'm I'm thinking this record is going to be number two. I'm sorry, nothing can trop uh, Metropolis, but um, it looks like it's going to be an absolutely amazing album. Now, um, obviously, I prefer Portnoy over Mangini. But Mangini, he's he's grown on me. I've listened to Distance over time, but a lot of people say that his other albums are kind of like divisive. Um, but everyone seems to agree that he did a really good job on Distance over time. Now, as to which keyboardist I prefer, 100% Rudess. Um, I'm I'm in the camp that thinks uh, Portnoy is the better drummer and uh, Rudess is the better keyboardist. Um, not because of technical capabilities. Uh, I told you I was going to get into why um, people prefer Portnoy, and it's simply because he plays with passion. Um, people, um, specifically the drummers, are the driving force behind songs. And if you have just, um, for example, uh, uh, he's not he's not a drum machine, but Mangini, he doesn't play with um, as much I would say emotion. He he uh, is a lot more precise and technical. Um, he doesn't really play with a whole lot of emotion, and I watched uh, I watched his his like argument against this, but ultimately like it it's true. Like um, Portnoy was not as was not as um, technical as um, Mangini was that I have seen so far. You guys can feel free to prove me wrong and argue in the comment section below, but um, Portnoy is definitely um, one that plays with a lot more passion and feeling. You, you can feel it. Um, when you uh, listen to his records versus when you listen to um, like something like Distance Over Time. Like he obviously, Mangini still has emotion, but um, it doesn't come through as clearly as Portnoy. So that's just my thoughts on them. I apologize for that sort of like long sort of, sort of tangent I went off on there. Hope you guys appreciated that. Um, if you didn't, sorry. Um, but let's go ahead and listen to Honor Thy Father. I'm pretty excited to listen to this. Um, See where was I at? This is one, like I said, has been requested a ridiculous amount. Holy crap! It's another ten-minute long song. <laughs> That's all right. I told you guys three, three songs in one video. Let's go ahead and get started. Oh shoot! I forgot to unpause it, unmute it. Okay, let's get started. 
I'm not trying to look at the... I'm not trying to look at the interpretation because I want to interpret it myself first. Mistakes like this, you 
biggest regret of my life. pause it there so I, I could say that um this is a pretty um this track kind of hits home for me um first let's talk about a musical analysis now i thought that the song um i can say i preferred the other two i heard more uh three including this dying soul but that doesn't mean that this is a bad song this is very very far from um a bad song. I will say that this is definitely, um, if compared to a lot of other albums, this would definitely be the top song on the album. But because there is, there's been three absolutely amazing songs on this record so far, I will say that Honor Thy Father is probably the, the least favorite one that I've heard. But I want to stress that I do not 
dislike this song. I actually love this song, but I love the other ones more. Um, this song is... Um, I definitely like the riffs a lot more in the other songs. However, the lyrical meaning behind this song is really where this song shines. Now, um, um, let's see. The riffs, uh, they weren't really as uh, intriguing to me as the previous two songs were. Um, what were they? I'm having a brain fart right now. Um, I could definitely say Endless Sacrifice, As I Am, and This Dying Soul um, have way better riffs than this song. I shouldn't say way better, just better riffs. Um, but the drumming was absolutely on point on this, and uh, Rudess's keyboard solo was absolutely amazing. Um, I like I like, uh, I like like Patricia's guitar solo too, but I definitely think he shined a lot more in the other two songs. Three songs, actually. I, I keep having to remind myself that I didn't check out this Dying Soul simply because I've already reacted to it. Um, but yeah. So the music is nothing short of um, greatness. I'll say greatness. I wouldn't say amazing simply because I like the other two better. But um, yeah, that's my analysis. And I have to rate it. Let's see. We're going to be uh, doing a lyrical analysis. So I'm pretty sure that this song, I'm intentionally trying not to look at what this is saying. This song is about either abusive um, parents or an abusive father or something and that hits home for me because i've uh i've dealt with that in the past um and he says we're taught unconditional love that blood is thicker than water that a parent's world would revolve always around their son or their daughter you pretended i was your own see this is the key word he says pretended i was your own so that must mean that this is a stepfather um and even believed that you loved me but we're always threatened by some invisible bloodline only you could see. Um, I'm pretty sure that the the parent in question is a step, uh, is a stepchild. I mean, is a step is a step parent. I'm assuming it's a father. He says you took advantage of an outstretched hand, uh, outreached hand, and twisted it to meet your every need. Um, Now, does this mean as a child, like the child tried reaching out to the parent, and the parent j just used the kid as a tool or something? Is And it says in a quote, give me time to recharge my batteries. I'll see her when she's older, and I'll bounce her on my knee. Eh, it could be. Very well could be. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this is a step-parent. He says, uh, I'll see her when she's older, and I'll bounce on my knee. In other words, you're not worrying about time with a kid when you should be worrying about time with a kid. Now, um, I do know some people that um, that I got I got to choose what I say carefully here because family could potentially watch this, uh, and it has nothing to do with family. But uh, I do know people that um, that don't spend as much time with their kids as they should, and they're making a mistake because they think that they'll have all the time in the world to to be with their kids later when in reality this is the time when kids are young is, sh is the time you should be um spending the most amount of time with them and it says well uh, it continues to say well listen to me you ungrateful fool here comes a dose of reality you'll go to your grave a sad and lonely man the door is now closed on your pathetic little plan so now that the child got older uh, the child didn't want anything to do with the father because the father never loved the kid in the first place. And it turned into bitterness and eventually hatred. Um, the chorus says, on and on and on and on it goes, stressing the um, the part. In other words, it's a revolving cycle. Um, it's so easy to run away with nothing in tow, meaning that um, he he doesn't really have any sort of attachment to the child. And so he it's easier for him to to walk away from a situation i guess and, he, and it it and the next line is the chorus and it says how can you ever sleep a wink at night pretending that everything is all right and have the nerve to blame this mess on me never in my life have i seen someone so ignorant to the damage he has done you're the rotted root in the family tree this is a pretty personal song if i had to say so uh i would say that one of the band members have experienced this. This is definitely touching a nerve. 
Um, either that or they're just really good at songwriting. Um, verse 2 says, I tried your four-bill therapy. Now, I don't know what a four-bill therapy is. If you guys could enlighten me down in the comment section, that would be amazing. He says, but nothing could lure you out of your selfish shell again. I tried to make amends, but nothing could lure you out of your selfish shell again. Um, in other words, I believe the the, the guy, the, the child tried apologizing, but uh, the, the father just used that as an excuse to walk away again or shut the, the, the kid out. Um, and it says, expecting everyone to bow and kiss your feet. Don't you see respect is not a one-way street. Blaming everyone for all that you've done wrong. I'll get my peace of mind when you hear this song. Okay, this is definitely about uh, like a family members, uh, like a, a a band member, a uh, family member is who this is about. I would say, uh, it says on and on and on and on it goes, and with every passing day, true colors show. Uh, I'm not gonna continue to go much more. You guys get the hint. Uh, and then there is a pretty interesting part where it's a, uh, it says it's a uh, a bunch of breakdowns from different movies. <laughs> Um, and it was just sort of like just generic – well, I wouldn't say generic lines, but things that like a person in this sort of situation would would feel. And it, it, it was pretty dark, and uh, I was kind of shocked. And then uh, we again did get some profanity from from uh, James Labrie, which is kind of – it's honestly – it's it's funny to me simply because I've never really heard him use profanity before I checked out um, the Master of Puppets thing. And so this is – Definitely a newer, like, thing for me. Uh, and he says, How can you ever sleep a wink at night, pretending that everything is alright, and have the balls to blame this expletive on me? Never in my life have I seen someone so effing blind to the damage he has done. You're the rotted root in this family tree. Yeah, this is pretty personal. Um, let's look and see what the actual, like, um, uh, interpretation says. The fourth track on Dream Theater's 2003 album, Train of Thought, written by the drummer Mike Portnoy, uh, Honor Thy Father is a hard-hitting, dark, and heavy track dedicated to calling out his uh, jerk of a stepfather that he felt never showed him the love and care a father should. I knew it! I knew it, knew it, knew it! Um, he says, at first, people thought it was about his actual father, Howard Portnoy. However, Mike clarified in an IRC ch What's an IRC chat? I don't really know. Uh, he that it wasn't about his father, for he had a loving relationship with him. The details of which can be seen seen in the best of times. Now, that song, I I haven't listened to that since the initial reaction, simply because that made me so sad. Uh, I definitely need to go back and listen to it again. Um, but I plan on doing. Um, I think it's on. I believe it's on. Um, Black clouds and silver linings. And I definitely do want to do a re-reaction to that one uh, in the context, in the proper context. Um, instead, it was about someone else in his immediate, f in his immediate family, hinting at by pointing out a keyword from the bridge, crooked. Let's see what he is actually referring to. The bridge. Don't you dare cross the crooked step. Oh, okay. Blank space emphasized by him and combining it with a word from the title. Okay, yeah, this is definitely about a stepfather. It's one of the heaviest tracks in uh, Dream Theater's discography. You know what? I think that I'm going to change my mind on this song simply because... Simply because, like, the, the lyrical meaning is so deep and so personal and I can relate to this. Um, I'm not getting into specifics, but I will say that I've dealt with a situation very, very, very similar to this. Um, I have definitely experienced abuse in my past, and uh, to this day, I still have trust trust issues because of it. And, uh, yeah, so I can definitely say that, like, um, this hits home for me as well. And I'm, I'm glad that, like, songs like this are able to help people like me. And, uh... I, I changed my tune on it. It may not be the most musically uh, complex song to me, but it is the most thought-provoking and the most, um, like, lyrically deep song I've heard off the album. Well, this one and um, all three of the ones I've heard have been, like, super deep in terms of, like, meaning. 
and that's, that's what I love about Dream Theater. Their their music is just so deep and rich and complex with narrative and stories and just real life experiences, and I love Dream Theater to death. Um, and I'm just forever grateful for having a chance to experience this uh, this journey with you guys. It's it's amazing, guys. That's all. That's gonna be that for this first episode. I realize that music makes up less than half of this video, but I do apologize. Um, hopefully, you guys like the more um, the breakdowns. I I do. I also did uh, go off on kind of a tangent, which definitely contributed. Anyways, um, look forward to part two next week. Um, I want to do some liquid tension experiment in addition to these. So if you guys have liquid tension experiment and you guys want me to react to them, make, please make sure you are um, suggesting it in the comment section below. On the next one, it's going to be the final one. If you guys want me to re-react to um, This Dying Soul, I can. But um, it won't be in in like the, the three. It'll be just a separate video. I don't think it's necessary simply because I listen to that song every single day. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say every single day. Definitely at least two or three times a week with the 12-step suite. Um, but yeah. Um, I don't think it, it warrants it. But if you guys want me to, I will. Now... That's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, look forward to the rest of it next week, and I'm going to be trying to get some liquid tension experiment up today. Um, I'm probably going to record at least one after this. I'm probably going to pick the most popular one or something. Um, with that, guys, this is Big Christ, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and we will see you next week.